वेलकम बैक एवरीबडी आफ्टर द डिस्कशन ऑफ हाइपोस्पीडियस नाउ वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द अदर टू टॉपिक्स दोज आर एपीस्पीडियस एंड एक्टोपिक वेसाई के एज द नेम सजेस्ट एपीस्पीडियस इट इम्प्लाइज दैट द यूरेथ्रल मीएटस इज ऑन टू द अपर सरफेस ऑफ द पेनिस दैट इज ऑन टू द डोसल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द पेनिस सो हेयर यू कैन सी ए वाइड यूरेथ्रल प्लेट which is uh, open and a urethral meatus is on to the mid penile or you can say on to the uh, penile area so uh, this is a very rare entity with the global incidence of 1 per 1 uh, million live birth uh, it said that it is more common in association uh, with the bladder extrophy epispedias complex and only 10% of the cases are isolated cases of epispedias the incidence of female epispedias is far less the exact cause is not known the proposed theory is that of the abnormality of the cloacal membrane and also the uh, you can say there is an abnormal interaction between the transcription factor and the various growth factor leading to epispedias now for male patients they will have a short stubby phallus with dorsally placed meatus and upward pointing penis so here the cordy that is uh, as we have discussed in the hypospedias lecture that uh, cordy is the curvature of the penis so here the penis is pointing upwards so these patients have a uh, dorsal cordy and they have ventral hooded prepuces where the uh, penis is uh, folded upwards and the prepuce is coming from the uh, down uh, surface so they have a ventrally hooded prepuce while for the female babies they they will have a bifid clitoris and the urethral opening will be patulous uh, vaginal opening will be anteriorly placed and their labias will be poorly formed a common thing that is noted in uh, epispedias is that they have pubic diastasis and if the uh, urethral meatus is near to the neck or, or the bladder neck then they may also have dribbling of urine or uh, present with incont urinary incontinence so for the male patients the epispedias is classified as glandular epispedias where the urethral meatus is uh, on the glands or the penile hypospedias where it uh, it is opening on to the uh, anus or it could be penopubic where it's opening at the root of penis just at the uh, bladder or uh, just at the abdominal wall for the female epispedias it is classified depending upon the opening of uh, urethral meatus with respect to the pubic symphysis so where it could be a normal uh, op there could be a normal uh, urethral opening then uh, there uh, it could be just uh, uh, just anterior to the uh, pubic symphysis then it could be at the pubic symphysis or it could be behind the pubic symphysis so these retro symphysial epispedias or those which are behind the pubic symphysis have the propensity to have in uh, con uh, associated incontinence no additional investigations are usually required it's purely a clinical diagnosis however it has been noted that the epispedias have associated vesico ureteric reflux in around 35 to 80% of the patient so micturating cystourethrogram or mcu can be ordered for these patient to look for uh, associated uh, vesico ureteric reflux long term psychological issues are there in these patients also there are some uh, complications also so they will need long term follow up prognosis wise the continence is the uh, predominant uh, thing that is looked in cases of epispedias the various there are various studies reporting continence of uh, 50 to 90% and the continence uh, is more in the Uh, better in cases of female epispedias after repair 
so uh, when we treat manage a case of apis pds we have to make sure that we provide a good cosmetically acceptable genitalia which is continent and is free of reflux so initially we do urethroplasty where the urethral tube is created which could be done utilizing modified kentswell rensselaer repair reverse macpy or michel and bagley's complete penile uh, disassembly technique along with this at times they also require penile elongation procedures so after the initial uh, procedure uh, these initial procedures we assess for the bladder capacity of these patients and if they have a good bladder capacity then we go for bladder neck reconstruction which can be used uh, which can be done utilizing young d's lead batters technique or various suspension procedures for female apis pds previously stage procedures were being done where abdominal uh, abdominal approach was also uh, being uh, utilized however in the last few decades there has been a marvelous change in the management of female apis pds wherein only single stage procedures are being done and that too from the perineal area and those are giving the cons- continence uh, status or the post op continence in these children reach are reaching up to 90% various complications are seen uh, after the uh, apis pds repair early complication could be wound infection or dysuria they can also have urethral strictures or obstruction persistent cordy short penile length could be another uh, could be other complications uh, very rarely urethral retraction and a uh, hypospedias could also be seen with repeated surgery they can also land up with partial or the complete penile loss the last topic uh, in this uh, lecture is the ectopic vesicle this is a very rare condition with the global incidence of 2.2 per million newborns however it is a very serious congenital malformation that includes the anomaly of anterior abdominal wall urinary tract genitalia pelvis spine or anus so what happened in this as the name suggests ectopic vesicle the bladder is or the urinary bladder is exposed onto the abdominal wall as you can appreciate in these two images this is the bladder mucosa that is popping out onto the abdominal wall which is moist with the continuous dribbling of urine which is uh, due to the ureteric openings onto uh, this bladder uh, tissue and there is a fleshy umbilical stem or it could be sicariated or if the child is presenting late there could be just a skin tag over here so uh, the they also have bifid uh, uh, glands or uh, the splayed glands with the apis pds and dorsally uh, curved uh, penis which uh, also has a ventrally hooded prepuce in these patients the scrotal folds are also displaced also they have anteriorly placed anal opening exact cause is not known there are various theories proposed like the wedge effect of the large cloacal membrane or the caudal displacement of genital tubercle it has been seen that there uh, is a risk which is 500 times more in offspring of affected parents also it has been noted that the preconceptional use of folate uh, is very helpful to prevent the ectopic vesicle now there has been a spectrum of ectopic uh, vesicle described cycle uh, fissure where the genitalia is normal but the bladder is exposed on to the uh, abdominal wall then it could be a classical bladder extrophy as we just described to the male apis pds and the female apis pds now these patients have various bony defects or the pelvic floor defects you can imagine that normal pelvis is like this 
so it is a position like this however in these gates it is open like this where there is external rotation pubic diastasis increased uh, or the short anterior pubic segment with the uh, retroversion of the uh, acetabul acetabulums also the due to this motion the entire pelvic floor musculature is deficient or it is poorly developed so what happens in these patients the uh, clinical picture is that they have uh, exposed bladder plate from which there is continuous dribbling of urine when these uh, children grow up they have waddling uh, gait due to the various bony anomalies then anti they have anteriorly placed anus in very rare uh, rare cases they can also have uh, fecal incontinence or the rectal prolapse due to the improper closure of the abdominal wall they may also present with inguinal hernia or undescended testes so for male patients they have uh, like exposed bladder mucosa continuous dribbling of urine there would be short stubby phallus with epispedes associated pubic diastasis small bifid scrotum inguinal hernia or undescended testes for female uh, extrophy bladder they can have exposed again the exposed bladder mucosa with dribbling of urine bifid clitoris anteriorly placed vaginal opening poorly formed labias pubic diastasis the ectopic psyche can be diagnosed antenatally but is usually missed to uh, identify it antenatally one should uh, vigilantly look for the non visualization of fetal bladder especially when a uh, fetus is having normal amniotic fluid and the normal kidneys closely look for uh, bladder filling whether it's there or not the low set umbilicus or presence of any lower abdominal mass these cases uh, the case of ectopic vesicae can have other associated Uh, genito urinary anomalies like an inguinal hernia undescended testes various renal anomalies and vesico uretic reflux especially when we close the bladder and there is sudden increase in the bladder pressure so main objective in cases of uh, extrophy bladder is to provide a competent receptacle a uh, channel for urine storage which should not have any reflux which should have a, a cosmetically acceptable genitalia with better functional outcomes in terms of continence and future sexual functions there are basically two approach for the reconstruction or repair which includes modern stage repair of extrophy and the other one is the complete primary repair of extrophy so in the modern stage repair initially the bladder plate is just closed so it's called the primary turn in at a later date epispedes repair followed by bladder neck repair are being done and if needed they can also uh, have anti reflux procedure at a later date so it is being done in a stage wise manner while the complete primary repair of extrophy addresses all these issues in the single setting there can be various complication associated with the repair post op cases of ectopic ectopic vesicae that they can still have incontinence because the small there will be small bladder reservoir and the bladder neck will be petulous they can have uh, renal scarring hydronephrosis renal damage due to vesico uretic reflux causing back pressure changes they can also have recurrent uti epididymitis cystitis or pyelonephritis so they also have bladder stone dysuria or hematuria in rare cases with due to uh, this uh, chronic comorbidities they can have a psychosocial issues later on they can have sexual or the fertility issues also due to various uh, bony anomalies gait problems back aches will be there and also in a very very rare cases there will be metaplastic changes into the urinary bladder plate which can lead to malignancy so the continence has been reported 
from 10 to 90 percent by various studies in the hands of various surgeons. Cosmetic cosmetics is, however, uh, acceptable in around 70 to 80 per 85 percent of the patients. They again will require long term follow up. Also, they will require various additional procedures like they may need redo bladder necks or may need Botox injection in the bladder neck for improvement in their continence status. For cases presenting with bladder stone, they may need lithotripsy or the open stone retrieval. They may also need catheterizable urinary stroma which is known as mitrofenov. And when they have a very low bladder capacity, they may need bladder augmentation which can be done with other tissues like utilizing gastric colonic ileal uh, tissues. At times when the they can also be given new bladder wherein the entire bladder is uh, formed from the other tissues and uh, the, and the uh, remnant or the native uh, bladder tissue have, are to be removed. Then for cosmetic uh, reasons, they may need genito, uh, various uh, genitoplasty, clitoroplasty, monsplasty. So this is this may just seems like a list of procedures they may need, but they do need long term care. And this entity is very difficult to treat. It uh, requires multidisciplinary approach, wherein not only surgeons but nephrologists. A urologist, psychologist all need to uh, chip in to manage these cases. Thank you.